Today, we're looking at Diatrementis Fog Gray. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Diatrementis Fog Gray, as would be expected, it's a gray ink, which is nice because some grays can be too dark towards black and too light towards not there, but this one is actually perfect in its mid-level tones. Now to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a cross bailey with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. But before we look at the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. Up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And I do see a darker line across the bottom, this grayish, purpley, little bits of purpley, moving up the page. So it's... When you make blacks and grays, a lot of times you're using other colors to make it a more interesting than a dull gray. And I think that's what has been done here. Now the one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That line across the bottom, definitely noticeable. It is not budging most of it, which makes me feel like there's going to be a lot of resistance on it. But the interesting thing is this. I see a purpley kind of tone in the one on the left, but on the right, at the very top, it looks like some teal or turquoise coming through. It's what makes this one a rather interesting gray. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pens. Now, I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, it, for the most part, looked like it would do okay. It's the lowercase h that makes me worry. When I see uh, an ink do that much, I worry about the amount of reactivation. And more importantly, I'm thinking about the idea of what happens if I lose something important in my notes. So this might not be an ink I would go to if I had to highlight in my notes. They do make a document one of these that's much more permanent. Water completely reactivates some of it. So I want to say water reactivates it, lifts a bunch of it off the page, and leaves a bunch of it behind. That dark gray line that we saw in the chromatography, yeah, it's here. It's really holding out in place. This is not their permanent one, but this one is fighting being removed. The water only picked up the darkest tones. Pen flush did everything water did and nothing more. It just, it's, we see the dark gray that was there with the chromatography. This is the point that's slightly worrisome to me because I worry that pen flush is not going to be enough. And it's this point I say, if you're going to use this ink, what you do is try it in an inexpensive pen before you put it into your expensive pen so that you know if it's going to have any kind of staining issues, although I haven't experienced any. Bleach, as would be expected, is removing almost all of it from the paper. It does leave this kind of khaki brown behind. I'm really hoping it wouldn't take anybody the use of the bleach solution. It's only a one-third bleach, bleach solution. I'm hoping we wouldn't need that, though. For the inks I've tested, I found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Diatrementis Fog Gray has a viscosity of 3.59. That means it's actually a very dry, flowing ink, and that the amount of what's staying behind, this must be a very saturated ink. A lot of stuff is getting down without having to put so much ink down on the paper. It makes me feel like if it's a little bit stubborn that you could probably loosen the ink up a little bit with, you know, lighten it up some with some water without affecting its tone. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper with an extra fine and medium nib. For the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Diatrementis, fog gray, reigns in that very dry, very high viscosity number by having an average dry time of 14 seconds. Very normal. Way to go, Diatrementis. Now, let's look at the writing sample. 
I picked this ink up in sample form, and to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's look at that Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting, no centering in the frame. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no real shading. Now when we go to the extra fine, it's the same shade. It has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We do get some darker areas. I don't really want to call it shading, but we do get darker areas. So yes, you might consider it, but they're intermittent. H in the, K in quick, X in fox, but that's about it. So only where it's heavier. Eight seconds to dry. The medium, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. We see shading throughout this writing, which is very nice. It's a nice dark gray, and then it gets to almost a light black. I know that just sounds like the same thing, but it's a light black. So the, the medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does get shading throughout the writing. The bottom of the B in brown is different than the R. It's different than the top of the B. Fox shows three different tones of the same gray. It's very nice. Over goes from light, and it travels all the way to much darker on the R. Very nice shading throughout the medium. 15 seconds to dry. Now, the scrubby for the extra fine shows no color variation. We really didn't see much here. The medium shows us much more color variation, and we did get quite a bit of color variation. And I believe you could recover this if you smeared it while you were writing. So Tomoe River, it has no bleeding, it does have ghosting, the 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, noticeably lighter tone for the extra fine with no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade, it only took 12 seconds to dry, the medium a noticeably darker tone again, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 22 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both shows us no color variation. We didn't get any color variation. The smear test says you're likely not going to recover it if you smeared while you were writing. So Rhodia paper. Rhodia gives us no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade in this at all. The, the extra fine a noticeably lighter tone with no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and yes, we get lovely shading throughout all of it. It's not just that little bit darker spot, but we have very light tones, medium tones, and dark tones. So that's where I see the full shading of this ink with this paper on the extra fine. It took nine seconds to dry. The medium had no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, very little shading shows up. Very little. Only in small spots do you see it much darker, and then that's it. But no real shading into it. There are spot, spots that are darker. It took 16 seconds to dry. The extra fine scrubby showed us plenty of color variation, which we did get. The medium showed us a little color variation, and we really, you know, other than a couple darker spots, didn't get it. The smear test says you could likely recover it. So I took my notes with a Cross Bailey medium. It's a much wetter pen, and it's a darker tone and lacks color variation. So when I use a wetter pen, I see less color variation, which is something that's been quite normal in what we see. Smear you would likely recover. So I looked at this on the yellow rhodia, which of course gave us no bleeding and no ghosting. But what happens to the tone? Well, the 1.1 and the extra fine have the same tone. The medium becomes a noticeably lighter tone. So that's nice. That's nice to see there. The 1.1 gave no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It did have spots that show us some color variation. Little bits. The, the yellow background makes it easier for certain tones to either come out or wash away. And in this case, they're coming out a little bit in the shading. The extra fine, that noticeably lighter tone, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Yes, we do see little bits of shading, little bits. The tone was the same as before, but we, we don't see as much of the shading occurring. We just get the medium and dark tone. 
we don't get the full spectrum of that shading and it's harder to spot. Nine seconds to dry. The medium with no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for the extra fine shows us a little bit of color variation. We saw moments of it being darker. The medium shows no color variation and we didn't get any. And the smear test says you could likely recover it. So I look at life paper. This is a laid paper although it doesn't feel like it when you touch it. It gets no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade comes through. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone with no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Six seconds to dry. The medium, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and the shade really comes out on this ink. Comes out beautifully. Quick, starts with darker, gets lighter, gets darker again at the I, lighter at the C, darker at the K. Very nice. Brown is a single lighter tone. Fox changes tones from lighter all the way through darker. So it shades very nicely on this paper with a medium nib. Now the extra fine shows us no color variation, and we really, I'm sorry, the extra fine shows us, uh, a bit of quite a bit of color variation. We really didn't get to see as much of it in the writing. The medium scrubby shows us almost no color variation and it had fantastic shading all the way through. The smear test says you can likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Franklin Christoph paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. The extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does offer shading. It's a lighter tone than we got with the 1.1. It offers nice shading throughout, which you don't always get on the Franklin Christoph paper, but it's a nice shading that's going on with the extra fine. It only took four seconds to dry. That's super fast. The medium, a very noticeably darker tone, has no feather, spread, halo, sheen, or shade. Only took six seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for the extra fine shows us Almost no color variation, but we did get some very nice color variation up here. The medium shows us no color variation, and we didn't get any color variation. And the smear test says you can likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. And that's all that I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Diatromantis Fog Gray, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Krishna's Bohemia because it is a really nice pink magenta that I feel would add some much needed color when you're writing with gray inks. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Diatromantis Fog Gray? I think you can control the tone of the ink you're getting on the paper with different nibs and flows which I don't always care for, but it's not always a bad thing. But you can get a bunch of different tones, which is interesting. It does mean that shading should be incredibly available to this ink. It also would likely pass in a professional environment. I don't think anybody would look at you writing with this ink and think it's not the colors they want. They would just think you have an odd black ink but nothing else would be said. Thanks for watching.